Hello and welcome to Plugin Corner, where I take a look on Godot's plugin system and existing plugins around the marketplace. So today I've been working with Line 3D plugin, where Redefine Game Dev featured in this video, where he talks about his experiences using Godot for creating lines. Throughout the video, he said that even though 2D has an existing Line 2D node, 3D does not have a Line 3D node. So he proposed a plugin to solve that and at the same time called up the community to build interesting things using Godot's plugin system to help out the 3D development. And since then, I've been trying to improve his existing plugin like you see here. Here I'm using only line 3Ds all around. I created everything like this demo level kind of thing with a, I don't know, like a sun or a rotating deity. I don't know. It certainly depends on what you want to do with your game. But you can see that there are flat lines, more or less how you proposed. But there's also custom materials, which I just put on top of the line. It's solid, so I can walk on top of it if I wish. And on top of this one, you can see there's a railing, which is not flat. It's actually a cylinder. And same thing goes to that thing. So in this video, we'll see how to use a plugin by exploring this existing scene, trying to build one for our own. So as a basis, I'll just show what the plugin does. I'll create a new scene, empty scene, add a child. And within spatial, within path, you'll find line 3D. You'll see that line 3D like doesn't appear. There's a, nothing here. But these gizmos over here appear. Line 3D extends the path node. If you already had path and used path before, you'll probably remember these same things where you define a path that goes from one place to the other. It's great for AI or movement, for example. And from here, I suggest you to use this gizmo to force one specific view so that you can build things on a plane, depending on what you want to do, of course. So from here, you can click here on the add, add a few things. And now we have a 3D line already. From this line, what you can define is the width. So let's make it gigantic, if you wish. You can also define a width curve, so to speak. So you can make it start big and end up small. You can change the color. You can also change a gradient which is similar to the color, but then it goes from one to the other, as you can see. You can also define a texture. For example, I'll just get the icon here and you'll see that it's stretching out throughout the, the line. There's also other options. So you can tile on top or double tile. The, these are examples, but everything can be customized through a custom material, if you so wish. And you can also have a 2D line, like so. So I'll just put back to tile and say you don't want actually the, the 3D line to be pointing upwards. You can change this using this custom direction. So say I want in the X, so we'll point towards the X. Or if you have a camera within your scene, you can also ask it to point to the camera, which is probably the best way to use it. So now it's properly following the camera, so we'll just wrap around it. Some other features are related more towards the resolution of the line. And it's also important to remember that all the lines, if I go back to this and this, the line resolution can be defined by like smoothing it or changing the resolution of the cross section or the line itself with these two variable. With these and also with the Bezier curve, which you can access by holding shift and dragging from one of the dots, you can just build nearly anything that you like. So this is how the basis of this line works. Here in this test scene that I built, you can see that I have like just a regular thing on the bottom, but then I created this little thing for me to walk on top. This is just a line also. 
we can add it as you wish and it gets to the ground so that I can go on top of it using the collision mesh over here and you can choose whether you want a convex or concave if I enable here visible collision shapes you'll see what the collision shapes are generated from this automatic procedure and here it is now the, the other collisions are still being generated but you see that this is the the convex shape it's not exactly on top of the line but it's good enough and it's more performant to use however if you use a concave or triplanar method you see that it's much more exact and it literally follows what the mesh polygons are defining so it's much more intense for your cpu with this let's see how we can build a scene similar to what i did here i'll go back to this one just delete my line for now and let's start with uh, some ground i can create a line 3d use a gizmo now I have three points I can go to z click on this one so that i can edit the lines and just pull the ones that are supposed to be up and i pull the wrong one this one, and this one. Then I can say my width is 1. I want a flat surface pointing upward. So now I have a flat surface pointing upwards. Here it is. And I can just generate the collision. Pull my player character, which I got from this plugin. So if you want to try it out also, that there's a plugin with an example FPS character. Put back the CSG box and I just can't see anything because this color is horrible. So let me just edit the CSG box material. It's funny that black becomes blue because of everything. And I'll just put a light too. Now I can see things at least. So you'll notice that there's a little bit of chopping. This is because there's no Bezier curve. So example. And of course, I also need this to have use collision. Now I already have the little ramp that I did before. If I want to build, say, a, a wall around myself, I can do the same thing, just creating a new line 3D. I'll call it wall. Click on Y. Go around myself, stuff like this. And I'll say I want also a flat surface pointing towards the camera with a large width. And I, because I had a different camera before, I needed to just close and reopen the scene so that the new camera could be found so now my wall is pointing towards my camera i also will get this thing and create bezier curves here so that it's nice i'll give it a, a different color same thing to my wall my wall i give my icon in a tile manner So you'll see it's like above and below. This is why I made this double one, just because it's easier to do and duplicate if there's upwards and downwards. And from here, let's see, to create the railing on top, what I did was just duplicate this one, the wall, and call it railing. Uh, not this, railing. I can click here just so I don't create new things. I'll go up, you see that it, it's still trying to point to, towards the camera, but now this will be much smaller, rounded, with say a yellow color, something like this. Of course, I can just tinker with the line, and you'll see that since the two lines are actually the same, these curves here are the same, I didn't make unique. If you want to separate them, just click make unique, but since I didn't, I can edit both of them at the same time. I'll create some curves here so that it can follow it a little bit better. Nice. And you'll notice that the, the below one is like having problems mainly because my Bezier curve is not properly. So make always make sure to double check on multiple axes if the points are where you want them to be nice so this one also has to have generate collision so that's the wall and in the railing 
case i'll make this concave because if not this rounded shape will be pretty bad to walk on top and i'll end up just making a, a ramp so that i can get on top of that collision and from here i can already go up to my wall let's try it out i'm also showing the the collision shapes you'll notice that this collision shape is not triplanar but this one is so it's much more exact if it was not it will be hard to to walk on top of that finally the the huge thing that i made on top i once again just use another line i'll make say a circle and i can click on this last one to finish off on the same point that was in the beginning i'll make fairly large and click on the first one here to be able to pull it up I will make it smooth and I'll create a custom material for this one. By the way, you can use a gradient and I'll just leave the default one from black to white. If you come here in parameter, no, in vertex color, if you click use as albedo, you can still use the default and gradient from within your custom material. And I also, in that example, set unshaded something gives like this eerie feeling but you'll notice that it doesn't quite close it off properly so this part you need to do it manually if you wish to do it to be more exact something like this so if you're if i run it now it will be static if i want it to rotate you can right click here and extend script if you do this, you'll notice that I can't edit things anymore. If I come back to 3D, click on this thing, it doesn't change, you see? It gives error. So to fix this, you can just make this a tool. And now it works again. But it, lo <laughs> but it loses everything here. So be careful when you do this, just as I did. Once I'm here, I suggest, since this is a, a tool, I suggest you to, if engine, this will tell me whether I'm running this script within the editor or not. So if I'm running it in the editor, I'll just set process false so that my func process doesn't execute while this is, this is in, the, in the editor. And finally to rotate over the y which was what i did here you go so you see it's not rotating because of this if but if i run the project it will be rotating great and with this we concluded and recreated the scene that i showed you before you notice that this is pretty powerful and you can even though it's simple, it's pretty powerful to build like example scenes and test out levels or just create ramps if you want uh, things with collisions or just like arrows or pointers or things on the ground, things on the top, on, on the sky that fly. You can like create a bunch of things with this. To install this for yourself, you can for now go into my fork. It's not merged yet with redefines fork and clone it into your your project you'll get this add-on into the project this is like everything within this this folder is important everything else is not then from here project project settings uh plugins and just enable the plugin so i hope you liked it i hope you can either use this plugin for yourself in like game jams or I don't know, for yourself, make more, uh, please do make more 3D games. I'm looking forward to playing your games. Also support Redefine Game Dev with this 3D development effort within Godot. Thank you for watching.